What if I told you that I could get you started up in InDesign in no time flat, you wouldn't have to worry about ever buying templates from anybody, even me. Let's go. That's right folks, today what I want to talk to you guys about is getting started from the very basics, initial ground up of InDesign for somebody who has never done it before, a little bit intimidated by the program, doesn't know what to do with it. Let's make sure that we can change that dynamic, change that mindset, get you started so quickly and so easily, rocket ships to the moon from that point forward. That might be a bit of an exaggeration, but still, I'll get you going. Now, if any of you watched the last video, you might be saying to yourself, but Dave, shouldn't that have been the first video? Okay, maybe it should have been, but maybe not. Maybe just maybe Maybe what you really needed to know was how to get started with InDesign and not have to worry about fumbling your way through new documents. I wanted you to get in there and get into the nitty gritty with the template and change the colors and do all that stuff right away so that you could feel like, oh wow, that feels good. Feel a little bit more comfortable. Let's get into some meatier stuff. And that's what we're doing today. So today on the screen, we're going to start from scratch. We're going to start a brand new document. I'm going to do an eight page document, jump right into some of the basics and get yourself going. That way you won't ever need a template if you don't need it. You can just get right into it, do whatever you want. In the process, I'm going to be making some references to magazine. Pick different ones completely so that you have some understanding just so that we can look at the different pages and we can compare notes. The magazine that we look at doesn't really matter. We're really just looking at them for their framework. No more dilly dally. Let's get into it. It's going to hop on over to InDesign. We got a brand new document. Actually, I haven't even started a new document. We got a brand new page here ready to go. And of course, the first thing you're going to do in InDesign is go boom, click create new. You can choose any of these templates. If you want to do something print oriented, they have templates all already ready. We could do this if we wanted, but I want to go through this panel with you just so you get an understanding of how it works. The first thing, obviously, preset details is the title. You can name this whatever you want. For our purpose, we're going to say eight page template. Oops, not template. Template tutorial. The page is already decked out for a US letter. You can change this very simply to A4 if you want. If you're working in millimeters, you can go and do that. We're gonna keep it at US letter because I'm American. Next thing we're gonna change is the pages. We're gonna go with eight. Why would I pick eight pages? I don't have a whole lot of blank pages handy. I'm just gonna use these two notebook piece pieces. Just for the sake of argument, you have one sheet of paper here. It has two sides. The way magazines go, of course I don't have any of the appropriate magazines. What I'm looking for is a saddle stitch magazine, one where the pages are folded over. If you think about that, if this, and let's say this one too, were folded over, now we have an eight page magazine right there. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, it's not working. Six, seven, eight. Now let's deconstruct every single saddle stitch. Call it saddle stitch because it looks like a saddle. Every single saddle stitch magazine requires at least, at least four pages. One, two, three, four. These magazines, every single one of them that I have over here because I wasn't, I didn't have enough forethought to bring the saddle stitch magazine with me. Every single one of these is called perfect bound. They take one big giant piece of paper for the cover. It's got a spine right there. They take these individual pages and they throw it in there. Boom, boom, boom. Most people who are getting magazines made their themselves are doing saddle stitch. You might have the opportunity to do a perfect bound. More likely you're doing saddle stitch. So we have to think in numbers of four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24, and so on. If you're doing a perfect bound one, then think of pages in two. We're going to go with four since we want more than just one fold, we're gonna go with eight. This little button right here, this facing pages button, this has to do with how this document that we are gonna make gets printed. There are two ways to think about this, and this is gonna come down to how you decide to print whatever it is. If you're gonna make a zine, gonna do it DIY out of your own printer, go down to your local copy shop and print it out of there, then you are not gonna want facing pages. You are gonna want, well, not facing pages. <laughs> If you were gonna take this magazine and take it off to print it someplace, then you were gonna want facing pages because the printer is gonna do all what's called the pagination. They're gonna do all of that hard work themselves. You give them the document, PDF at the final release, and they're gonna take it and they're gonna restrip it in a way that fits their printing priorities. For our purposes today, we're just gonna go ahead and use facing pages. In another document, I'm gonna be talking about how I'm building my own zine down the road a piece. When we get into that, I will talk about why we don't wanna use facing pages more 
more and show you exactly why. We obviously want to start our page on page number one. The primary text frame here would be if we wanted to put a single text frame on every single page of this document so that we could just immediately drop in text in every single one. This is effective for say book designs if you want to just drop in text for a book or a pamphlet that's nothing but text page to page, no columns, no nothing. I'm not going to do it for this one because we're really not going to use that much. We're only going to use a little bit of text, doesn't need to be on every page, I'm not going to include it. You do whatever you want. Experiment. Play around. Columns means how many columns per page. Sometimes I use three, sometimes I use five, sometimes I use nine. Just depends on what kind of grid pattern I'm working with. If we were to look at, say, Worth Magazine, you look at all these different pages, you can tell that the layout kind of changes depending on the content. Here is a four column, another four. Here's another four column layout. This one's more of a two column layout here and here. Three pay, three columns, they, they jump around. They jump around all over the place and you can do different things with different column pages. We're just gonna go ahead and keep it at three for now, just because, and we're gonna keep the column gutter as standard margins. This one is gonna be something you will have to experiment with on your own. The standard here on margins, and basically that just means the border around the inside of the pages, right there. This is your gutter margin in here. You have to decide how much you want. If you look at here, this is about, this is a European magazine, so it's probably millimeters. Let's just say half inch. If I go over here to, I think it's anthology. Sometimes they have a really tiny little, it's really even hard to see, but it's really tiny, maybe a quarter of inch. Some magazines you'll go and they'll have a big fat one inch border all the way around. It's completely up to you. Go do what fits right. We're just gonna keep it right now at half inch. Bleed and slug. Bleed is anytime you put something that extends beyond the page, anything that you put put on the page that you're working on. Like what's gonna be cut off, perfect example, in any scenario is your cover. This cover obviously had to come off of the page in order for the printer to trim it correctly. If you were to say, design this page in InDesign, and put the picture right up to the border, up to that edge, and the printer came in here with the cutting machine, more likely than not what's gonna happen is they're not gonna get that cut perfect on that line. It's just impossible because of the way paper would. It moves around, it's organic, and so it kind of moves sometimes. If you put it right up there, it's gonna trim, and it's gonna have like little white edges on it, and you don't want that, so we need to bleed off. The bleed, ultimately will depend on your printer. If your printer requires a, a third, then do that. If they require an eighth, do that. I'm gonna put our bleed 0.125, and you click that little button and it goes all the way around. That's probably overkill for us, but I just do that and the printer can figure out the rest. Create, boom. There we go. I'm gonna back out of this just so you can see it. Oop, that's probably a little too far. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Eight pages. The reason we call this facing pages is right here. It means this page faces that page, this page faces that page, this page faces that page, just like this. Front cover, back cover, independently facing pages. You're gonna design it as page one to page eight, and the printer is gonna figure out how those all work when they go to lay out on a piece of paper. I'm gonna zoom into one of these page spreads. Back it up just a little bit so you can see. Page spread, uh, is this my, yeah, this is my two and my three, my page two and my three. We have our columns, we have all this other stuff. I'm gonna start with how to get text onto the page. The easiest, most simple way, click this type tool right over here in your tool palette, click and drag anywhere, it doesn't even matter. You can fit it to the column if you want, you don't have to. I'm gonna go across two columns. That now can be fitted with any kind of text. But what if you don't happen to have text immediately readily available? Sure, you could go and find some document, your Word doc, your Evernote, whatever that you use and just copy and paste it right in here, but I've got an easier solution. If what you're just trying to do is fill the space so that you can see what should go there, you go right up here to the top menu, the type menu, and then all the way back down to fill with placeholder text. Boom, just like that. I wanna take away the columns here, just or just the view of the columns so that you can see what we're doing. This text is gibberish. It's called Lipsum. Lipsum? It's called Lorem Ipsum. I was thinking about the website. Lipsum, I think it's called. You go there and you can copy and paste it from them. You don't have to because it's right here in InDesign. Comes in as paragraph size and then it has all the punctuation and all that stuff. None of this means anything, makes no sense. You can't read it. It may look like Italian. It may look like Greek, it may look like Latin. It's not. It's just there to fill the gap. You can change this all you want. You can make it bigger if you want. I'm gonna go ahead and break some of these lines, delete some of this just so we can see what's going on. Actually, I'm gonna get rid of that because 
that's kind of a dumb one right there. It does tend to put line breaks and punctuation in some weird spots sometimes, but again, we're just here filling space. Doesn't really matter that much. So there you go. That is how you get text in. You can also do copy and paste. I'm going to copy this one here. Click off for a sec. Click there. New, new text box. Copy and paste. Let's say, for instance, you had another box. There's a couple of other boxes. This one here is rectangle frame box. This one's your rectangle tool. Either one of these can be used for images. The, the frame box has, has that frame so you can see image kind of related and the other one's just for shapes. If you wanted a rectangle shape, you just wanted like a colored shape. But watch this. Here's this frame box typically made for putting images in, but I don't want to put an image in that one. I've changed my mind. I want that to be text. We choose the text tool, which is T. I don't know why it's doing that. Click. Did you see that? That was fast. Let me back that up. Click. Boom. Clicked right in there. Immediately became a text box. Just like that. Hey, I'm going to really blow your eye in here. Watch this. We're going to go here and I'm going to draw this text box right here. And then I'm going to go hit command D and I'm going to just find a random image right here out of unsplash. That was weird. Why did it do that? That's not what it's supposed to do. Let me try that again. Text box. Oh, that's right, because I'm in it. Okay, so I've got it selected. I was in it before, but I just really just want it selected. I'm selecting it, not in it. Don't have the text thing in there. No blinky lights. Command D. Find an image, doesn't matter what, boom. Just became an image box. All of your boxes, whether it's this image box, the rectangle box, the type box, any one of those, they are interchangeable. You can use them all for either one or any of all or both. Doesn't really matter. Maybe I moved into that image a little too quickly. I got in those images a little too fast for you. Sorry about that. Let's go a little bit slower. Again, click that button right there. Brett that rectangle box there and drag something like that. I like hotkeys. I like shortcuts, whatever you want to call them. I'm using the keyboard a lot faster. Once you start to learn to use the keyboard faster, you will be zipping through this program. Zipping through the program. You'll be zipping right through that program in no time. And that makes the whole flow. It makes the whole workflow go workflowier. Command or control. I'm guessing that's how it works on PC. I don't know. I haven't used a PC and since I was a kid. Command D will pull in anything. You can even pull in a, do a text document and I will still get it. Pick any one of these just for the fun of it. Boom. Just like that. Now you notice that it came in at a certain size. Didn't quite fit this particular frame. Didn't fit that frame. We're going to talk about that in a second. All right. One more time. We're going to do this the other way. We're going to do this the more traditional way. Go up here. Select your rectangle frame tool again. Click another box right there. Just drag it randomly or put it wherever you want. Go up to file in the menu bar. Place. As you can see, the hotkey for me Command D. Didn't I just say that? And open up the box again. Gonna pick anything I want. Wait a second. That doesn't look very good right there. You can't even see that dude's face. How do I know where he's at? I can click this sucker right there in the middle. Do you see that? You see that little eye? You click right there. See how the hand changed? If I click and hold and just, or if I click and just drag, it's gonna drag and then it'll show me after the fact. If I click and hold, it's like magic. I can see it. But then that's not nearly enough of this guy that I want to see. I want to see more of this guy. How do I see more of this guy? That's called fitment. You got your frame selected. We're going to go up here to object. We're going to go to fitting. Now you can fill frame proportionally, fill content proportionally, fit frame to content, fit content to frame, center content, all these other funny stuff. Look at that. Fit frame proportionally. It fits this way. You can see. Like what? It fits proportionally. You still can't see the dude. You can't see the dude. That's not good. So now I'm going to go back up there again. Object fit content proportionally. Now he's all there, but he's small. That's too small. Now I can't see this guy. Plus I got these big old edges right here. I'm going to get rid of those real fast. Watch this. Hover over those and just double click. Boom. Look at that. See how that happened? Let's do that again. Back that sucker up. Command Z. If you're not familiar, hover over so you get that little thing. Two clicks. Boom. It just, just right to it. Just right to it. But that's still not quite what I want. I'm gonna go back over here. Let's say this image. I'm gonna take him out of there altogether. We're gonna go back over here. I'm gonna fill this sucker and put it like that and move that type box. We know that that image is a little bit more taller than it is wide. Let's go back to that guy. See if we can find him again. Command D. I'm gonna do it my way. Do whatever you want. Select him. He came in all the way this time, mostly because this box has already kind of been readjusted a little bit instead of coming in like full size. He came in because this box has already been, it's already been kind of set to size. If I did a new one right now, I'm just gonna go brand new one again. Let's do about the same size as that one. Man D, let's pull that sucker, that same exact one in again. He came in at the size that the actual document is. We don't need that delete that. But let's just say he did. This one here did come in a little bit bigger. If you double click it, you can get the interior boxes instead of just the exterior ones. See, I've got this frame boxes here and that's what I'm talking about. You double click and now I got the whole image boxes. Anyway, so now he's here. It's not exactly fitting exactly right how I want. I'm going to show you a crazy trick. Command, Option, Shift, C, or Control, Alt, Shift, C. I'm guessing. You're going to have to experiment, PC users. Command, Option, Shift, C, fits. 
perfectly. That image fit perfectly frame and then the frame resize. Dang, it didn't do it exactly. Either. Oh, I blew it. I lied. It's been a long time. I'm a bit punchy today. It's hot and, and anyway, it filled the frame. It filled every single space, but then it also got it enough so that it would say, okay, I'm going to squeeze this down to the right dimension so that everything fits and it gets in there in the right way. Let me do that again. Boom. See how I did that? I made it bigger. Go down here again. Command option shift C like that. Oh, there we go. That's it. That's the one. Sorry. I'm <laughs> I don't know why I forgot that. That's so weird. Did you see that? Look at that. Let's go again. Bring that sucker up. Okay, that's where it is. I'm gonna bring it back down. I'm gonna make it a weird shape. I'm gonna make it shape like that. Command Option C. Fits the whole thing. All in there in one space. But maybe you don't want that. Command Option Shift C fits it proportionally and gets the job done. I over explained that one. I hope you got something from it anyway. Now here's a tip. Something I found out a while back and it's helped me out a lot. Specifically when I was working as a magazine designer, it helped me kind of frame of mind, get into the project, whatever story I was working on. I needed to figure out like, okay, I need to know what images I have, be able to pick and choose them as I need to go into this particular story. Your story may have one or two images and you don't have to worry about that. Some of my stories had upwards of like 30 images. Instead of going back and forth, okay, look at my file, look at my document, look at my files, look at my document. I wanted to have them all right here. I would create what's called an image array. At least that's what I call it. You call it whatever you want. So I'm gonna take the rectangle image box thingy. I'm gonna click and I'm gonna drag. And now here's the thing. If I just left it, it would just be one image box, but I'm gonna show you a trick. You hit the up arrow button, not down. Well, you can hit down, but that's later. Up one time creates two boxes, two times creates three boxes, four boxes, five, six. But those are some pretty narrow boxes and I've got way more images than that, don't I? Yeah. Oh, and by the way, if you did want to go less, then you go down arrow. Now I've got five, now I've got four. Those are still too long and narrow. I need more boxes and better shapes. Now I'm gonna go right arrow first. Look at that, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. I wanna go, look, oh my God, look at that. That just so, look at that. Now, too many, back down and then left arrow, back, back. There we go, this is gonna be good. One of my favorite favorite things to do right here. I need to get 12 images into these boxes. I don't know if I have 12 images readily available, but we're gonna try. Command D. I think I got 12 images. These are for a project I'm working on, another one of the templates I'm working on. You can kind of see, I can't move it around and show you with my pointer, but if you look right by my pointer, there are 18 images selected. I don't need 18. We're just gonna use it for now. If I were to oh, come out here and just click, it would just go and lay out 18 images right on top of each other, all full size. Don't want that. Instead, what I want is this. Click, 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 click. I don't need these other ones. I'm just gonna hit escape, 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 boom. All those other things are gone. But now again, look at all these. None of these fit the box. So what am I gonna do? I'll tell you again. Let's go up here again one more time. Fitting, fill content proportionally. That's just because what I want is to be able to see all these images really quickly as thumbnails off to the side. Just like that. Just like that. And if I was really particular, I would select them all again. Command, option C, and now all the boxes fit precisely to that size images. And now I can pick and choose these however I want, whenever I want, do what I want. One thing we didn't talk about is actually resizing these images. Go ahead and resize that sucker to what it's supposed to be. There we go. Bring it back down. Command, control, option, and you click on any one of these. Oh, shift will hold it, right? You wanna constrain that proportion. If you do the option, it's gonna come in from either side. If you don't do the option, just command and shift. If I just click, no, if I just click, you can see I didn't hold it long enough. I just clicked it and just started moving it. It didn't move. It's moving it, but it's not moving it. I'm not seeing the move, the image move around. I'm just seeing the frame move. But if I click hold, now I'm seeing that sucker move around. You may want that, you may not, but there you go. You've got the options now. You can go opposite way, you can go upside down, you wanna go the other direction, you know, you resize that sucker all you want. Of course, you can always come up here to these things here and change the document size and change the document size and see how it, made, it changed the frame. It made the frame better, made the frame bigger, didn't make the image bigger. I can go and increase the size here. If I double click in here, double click, see how I did that? Double click again, went to the goldy corners instead of the bluey corners. Now I can go in here and change the size here and change the size here and move it around, put the percentage up and put the percentage back down. I can do that all day long. I can have fun with that every time I want to. This is good enough. Anyway, folks, that's pretty much it. That is how you get a basic document started. If you wanted to go and put more text in here, you could put another text box in here, put more text in there, fill that sucker up, placeholder text, and put another text box in here and fill that sucker up with placeholder text. And then we're going to go here. We're going to put an image right down there, command D and boom, and resize just for fun of it. Now you got 
the basics of a page started there. But this is really inconvenient and not very easily put together and I'm gonna teach you how to do that even better in a future video. Make sure that you subscribe and you click the bell. The subscribe is here. The bell is even further down. You do those things and you're never gonna miss any one of these videos. I'm gonna be doing them on a regular basis like I said before and you may not want to miss next week or the two weeks or four weeks or eight weeks because it might be the most important one you ever learn. Anyway, folks, that's it. I'm done for today. Remember, be good today, be even better tomorrow. See ya.